companies embed a culture and also importantly a pathway to remain competitive and relevant to customers' changing needs and wants. My aim today is really to stimulate thoughts um, to, to, to you all in regards to how you can implement a sustainable uh, policy and practices within your business to drive, uh, to drive uh, competitive, competitiveness and also uh, profits. So I'm moving to the second slide. Sustainability incorporates consideration of economic, social and environmental factors of a company's product and services. Many companies are applying sustainability policies to lead their development in and growth into the future. Many organisations, well, the different organisations, uh, have a variety of, of business practices and there are different methodologies of how and what they require in regards to their sustainability strategies. Sustainability includes both an in internal and external considerations and will vary across these different businesses. The example here that I've given, given as an example of sustainability strategies, it is no good to build an efficient V8, which we can see on our left, when our customers are, are seeking more eco-friendly models. So both the sustainability strategy gets our, us and our organisation to look not only internally, but also externally um, at our customer base. Customers' needs and wants are evolving. It's not just a question of, is it good for me anymore? The decisions customers are making include, is it good for my social image? Is it good for my community? Built into these decisions is a consideration of the lifestyle attributes which I've, I've collectively summed here which cover economic issues and that includes the pricing, um, the price to pay but also the social aspects and also the environmental aspects that may, um, that may uh, be associated with a product or service. In this instance here, again as an example, the consideration of, of bottled water. Um, what happens to that bottled water, that, that plastic bottle after it's, after it's been used? It, it can have detrimental effects to the environment and also it can be a cost to the community. These considerations are, are part of the evolving um, uh, decision making uh, by customers and clients. And in, in this aspect, the consideration includes the life cycle of a product or, or service. So with the bottled water, and I've seen it many a times out there surfing, uh, bottled, bottles float in um, throughout, throughout the water. I've provided a um, sustainable lifestyle framework to, to understand uh, the merging, in a sense, consideration of, um, of uh, people's decision making um, and, and t titled it with, uh, in a group form, the lifestyle attributes as discussed. And it includes uh, the, the, emer the emergence of economic, social and environmental decisions in regards to the, the preference that customers will, will make for a product or service um, to engage a product or service. And what I'm doing throughout the talk now is to elaborate on those, those three different sectors across economic factors and also the uh, social and environmental factors of a product and service. The question of how can a sustainability policy build competitive advantage? There are 
both as I've in, indicated, there are external and internal aspects to a um, to to those questions. Um, for instance, on an economic side, uh, regarding to a person's decision making, it, it does include the price or the cost of, of of a product or service, and internally we can look at um, factors such as direct and indirect factors of how much it costs for a product, sorry, for a company to produce those products or, or again, service as different organisations do, deal with different, um, different product or service offerings. In this case here for the example, the uh, direct factors, uh, it's operational cost to produce, um, it includes energy inputs, water and waste, aspects of packaging are an additional cost. These costs, the sustainability policy gets us to, to look at these different costs and how we can actually reduce those costs or minimise those costs in our businesses. Indirect factors that I've listed here as an example is in staff engagement uh, is one where staff are proud with the, with the companies incorporating the sustainability policy within their operation. Uh, especially in the younger generations, they are looking for companies to be more sustainable and therefore they are more engaged to, to continue to work for um, a company that has a, a green or environmental sustainability policy as part of their overall strategy. And aspects of supply chain are there in regards to how you um, communicate and how you deal with, with your service providers to your business. These strategies can help uh, reduce costs in your business, but also importantly, they can help reduce your environmental impact on, on how you conduct your business. Very, applying those cost strategies and, and cost saving strategies um, does help you um, in regards to how much you can charge for your, for your product or services. So therefore, um, in, 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 those, in those aspects, um, you have an ability with, a, with more efficient uh, operation in systems, you can be more competitive within the prices that you set. In a sense, you're making those prices, you're making those profits, whereas other businesses, less, less focused on, on cost controls, um, in a sense, uh, are price takers. And, and uh, have you got to just got to take the price of the marketplace, irrespective if they're making a profit or a loss. The the question for our listeners is is to think of how we can reduce our operational costs um, through an environmental strategy that reduces our environmental uh, impacts. And examples here for the off situation that are provided. Um, examples of changing the lighting to more efficient LED lighting systems uh, can instantly save money, uh, but at the same time reduces your energy use in your business. Reducing our printing is another easy example. Um, a lot of paper is, is wasted and that, and that paper uh, uses natural resources such as our trees to produce, to produce that uh, paper for our purposes. If we're reducing those wastes, we're reducing our impact on the environment. Again, another simple example is air conditioning, controlling our, our temperatures both through a summer aspect that we're living into or, or our heating in our winter. Again, it's about how much energy we're using and, and, and how much uh, more efficiently we can run our business but at the same time reduce the overall impact on our environment. The application of the sustainability policy within the organisation builds culture and engages staff to actively reduce their cost of doing business. The social factors um, of a sustainability pol policy and the lifestyle attributes uh, customers are, are, are looking is, in one sense, they are looking for the leadership in regards to um, the product, the, the companies that produce the product and services that they purchase. 
they're looking for uh, a, a, a corporate student ship or leadership within those companies to lead a better lifestyle uh, for us all. And um, the strategies uh, are socially accepted uh, for, the, for the community that we, we live in. There are also obviously the commercial uh, expectations uh, that, that can be driven through a sustainability uh, policy or strategy such as the supply chain requirements um, requiring different businesses to, uh, to ensure that they are, are employing environmental practices and but also helping to reduce the costs, uh, unnecessary costs in businesses that lead to environmental impacts. And examples of that through tendering and contracts um, are out there. Um, applications for tendering uh, a lot require a, a, a prerequisite of a, a certified or established um, environmental policy in place. So an environmental strategy adds values to what your product and service and brand represents. So the representation there is important um, for your customers and your clients to be, a, in a sense, to be associated with who you are and feel good about what your products, um, what your products are offering over and above, um, over and above the actual use of, of those product or services. So back to um, back to thinking in regards to sustainability and the implementation of sustainability within um, your business. The questions are: Can we minimise waste in our business? How can we participate in green initiatives, or can we even go to the extent of offsetting all our emissions that we that we may produce? The sustainability policy is a demonstration of your leadership and community support over and above what you offer in your product and services. And as we know um, throughout, and we're hearing more and more of it as we go on, um, both the commu at community level or at all levels within our community, um, sustainability is becoming the forefront of, of uh, most people's concerns and, and how we can um, ensure a, an ongoing lifestyle that we're all looking to uh, achieve and maintain. The environmental factors obviously are critical in regards to your product and service. Um, maintaining the relevance of your product and service um, both to, uh, to customers and clients uh, is, is um, is of utmost importance um, in regards to government regulations. Um, if you're not producing um, those, those services in an environmentally effective manner, uh, the regulations may, may require that, that your, your, your ability to produce those product or services in the future is actually uh, minimised. The a second part of the aspect of environmental establishing a sustainable environmental uh, policy within your organisation is to allow you to reduce potential uh, operational risks that may occur from um, the production the production of, uh, for instance, products. So, so reducing that environmental risk and, and that can significantly come at, at a high cost if, if you are not compliant with, with aspects such as government regulations. Consumer interactions, uh, lifestyle product and services, I highlighted the, the aspect of bottled water and potential impacts. Uh, we're well aware of um, increasing um, environmental or increasing uh, waste occurring in our oceans and our river systems uh, and that brings about that life cycle of the product and service after it's used. Uh, uh, increasing considerations of customers into um, into, into the decision making of whether whether they need or want your product into the future. So the sustainability policy uh, helps you continually meet the needs and wants of your customers. It keeps the focus on it, and it keeps you asking you the question: 
is is your your product still relevant, and will it might be maintained uh, have relevance into the future? How can we improve our environmental performance? Uh, we can minimise minimise the resources that we use to produce our product and services. For instance, we can also incorporate uh, recycled paper into our uh, system, uh, and also we can reduce uh, packaging systems. So there are a number of aspects uh, that uh, we can apply, but at the same time, the thoughts are there for you to stimulate your thoughts on how you can um, um, look at the environmental certification to reduce your impacts on, on how you conduct your business. So demonstration of your environmental equipment and the focus on how you do business in, into the future. So back to the um, sustainable lifestyle framework. Um, as I've indicated, um, decisions for, for customers uh, are increasingly incorporating uh, a, a lifestyle attributes to their decision making, um, incorporating the emergence of economic, social and environmental issues within, within the product offerings. And it's up to businesses and organisations to match match those attributes uh, in their product and services. That can be through direct actions in regards to how they produce their product or through indirect actions such as um, showing environmental leadership within the community, partaking in green strategies and also even looking at offsetting uh, their environmental, environmental uh, footprint. And many organisations are, are establishing that sustainability policy within their business to, to drive uh, their development and, and maintain their relevance with their customers. The, the benefits of sustainability policy in the summary and the certification is application can help you reduce the cost in your business and obviously increase your profits, but it can also help you uh, with, with variations in, in, in pricing your product and services uh, to further drive um, to, to drive the profitability and sustainability of you, your business into the future. A sustainability blueprint and action plan uh, continually allows your organisation to be involved in, in uh, sustainable strategies that will, will help again uh, keep the relevance of your business into the future. Staff involvement uh, and motivation is, a, 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 is another cost saving strategy and also a, a positive development within organisations um, <clears throat> who feel good about what they do and how they do it and are continually producing new ideas to improve that system. There are obviously the PR branding opportunities which, which in a sense um, illuminate to your customers uh, and clients of what you do and how you do your businesses and, and that can obviously bring in new revenue opportunities such as examples of the tender application that uh, I've, I've outlined or discussed. And again also risk mitigation, if you're focused on the environment, you're focused on reducing your impacts, you ref you've got to build in a quality control system in there to ensure that your practices are compliant and, and, and main, main, remain compliant into the future. And with, through that process, and, and we've discussed the leadership aspect of, of your organisation within the community as a whole, builds a stronger positioning of your company and your product and services and your brand. Through the uh, Green Biz Check certification program, it, the, the certification provides um, a challenge in a sense and an aim for your organisation to continually improve and con continually involve how, how you conduct your business in a sustainable manner. It implemented as uh, your sustainability policy and focusing on the competitive advantages that that that, that they will uh, achieve, the commercial efficiencies, 
are there in regards to to um, in regards to um, keeping your businesses on track. You're building the social acceptance um, of your organisation within the community, and you are being seen and are known as an environmentally uh, friendly um, company and, and producing environmentally uh, friendly product and services that increasingly customers and clients are looking to be associated with. The certification provides a, 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 a program for continual improvement and continual adjustment to the, to the adjusting needs of, of, of uh, customers and clients. Uh, which, as of as I've highlighted, are covering not just the economic and price issues, but they are also looking at the social factors and also the environmental factors in in what your product or service offers. Uh, that's about it for me. Uh, I'll just the, the presentation is there to stimulate your thoughts um, on how you can look at consider your business through a sustainability strategy, how you can increase your efficiencies and your um, and the value of your product to, to your services to maintain a positioning that, that keeps you in the favour favor position for your 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 customers and your clients and, and keeping that competitive advantage as a as compared to your uh, competitors. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Jared, for Hello. your presentation. Uh, as, so in closing, what Jared has demonstrated today is that by having a sustainability certification in place, demonstrating your company's leadership, you are demonstrating your company's leadership. So we're living in a generation where it's not just a good to have, being sustainable is an expectation. Uh, I'd like to thank you everyone for joining us today. If you do have any questions in regards to today's presentation, please pop them into the questions box and we'll answer as many as we can. I'll just give you a moment to type any questions in. So I do have one question that has come in and that has said, do large companies require certification? Sorry, Caroline, what was that? We have a question here. Uh, do large companies require certification? The, the requirement of certification uh, is, is in a sense dependent on, on the uh, what that, that company uh, uh, producers or manufacturers. Um, there are um, large organisations requiring certification through a, for instance, through a ISO 14001 uh, requirement. That may be required through a regulatory process or through a um, association with other uh, businesses that require that certification um, for them to for them to uh, deal with you. On a, on a business relationship, the 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 Green Bush Check certification program is um, is in, really instigating uh, organisations um, to adopt a sustainability strategy to improve their their, their performance and their positioning within the marketplace. So. In some aspects, it uh, is not mandatory, um, but at the same time, it, it, it's good for, good for your business and it's good for your sustainability uh, or your competitiveness within the marketplace that you operate. Excellent. And also, uh, if you, large companies could require certification to minimise their supply chain risk as well. Okay, so we do have another question that's come in. Is it useful for tenders? Now, yes, it is useful for tenders. 
that we have found most government and local councils require companies to have a sustainability policy in place. And also, if you look at working with major, major retailers, uh, for instance, Westfield, um, they actually require all of their supply chain to have a sustainability policy as well. So thank you for those questions. We do have one more, and that is, is there a difference between ISO 14001 and our certification, and what is better? So the difference there is ISO 14001 is more of a policy and procedure based system where our certification is an action based system. Uh, they, they're actually complementary with each other and um, here at Greenbiz Check we can actually offer both certifications for the price of one but to answer the question there is a difference, it's policy and procedure versus action uh, and, um, and that that's that. So what we'll do is there haven't been any other questions that have come through. So we might wrap up the webinar at this stage. I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance today and thank you, Jared, for the presentation. And we hope that you all enjoyed it. We will also be sending out an information pack after the presentation has concluded and that will have a link to the recording. So if you'd like to know more about how competitive um, sustainability certification can help your competitive advantage and share it with other staff members or colleagues, then uh, we will send you the link. So everyone, once again, thank you for joining us today. Hope you have a lovely rest of the day.